It's the only way over, it's the only way back. You look like you need a ride. It's a horse in the middle of the road. Have a look at this place. It's probably too late, it's probably too shallow. Can't believe how much of it is still here. Always wanted one of these. Get me back in before a crop gets me. Now, I don't know if I've shown you this yet, but my barbecue solution. So, I showed you originally that we had like a slide out, just a cooktop really. It wasn't a barbecue as such, it was just a couple of gas burners. Um, so what I did is I tore that out, I left all the frame and everything, and I've screwed on a bit of timber, and then I've screwed the Weber onto that. So that's, that's fixed on there. Now, obviously the web is too high. Uh, we did speak about, you know, maybe a Ziggy would fit, blah, blah, blah. We weren't gonna go spend the money on a whole nother barbecue when we've already got the Weber, which is perfectly fine. So, how do I make that work and get in there? This is how. Lynch pins. Lid. Take it off. Bang. She slides in. You okay? Oop, except it gets a little bit caught. But anyway, look at that. So that's how I have me Barbie. Obviously it means I've got to store the lid somewhere. I just chuck it in that front boot. Happy days. We get to use the Weber still. So dinner on the Weber. Burgers from Meated Billy's. Haven't tried their burgers yet, pretty keen. Had, um, we actually had a couple of steaks the other night. They were so good. And um, their chicken, some free range chicken breast, and that was awesome. So we'll do these burgers up. Um, first time actually using the Weber on the van like this. I did cook up some bacon today for lunch, but I didn't put the lid on. So it's actually pretty good so far. It's up high enough that the wind, it's not getting really a crosswind. And um, I used to have a lot of trouble with the Weber out the front of the van the gas or the wind blowing the flame out all the time so really did my head in but this seems to be going all right now all right how are those meat patties delicious i can't remember which one they were but it's just the regular oh regular yep yeah cool i'm keen to try the um lamb mint and halloumi oh yeah they sound good mm. that'll be delicious mm. anyway nice simple dinner and then early night i reckon tonight mm. righto jardine river crossing you got your office just over there so just literally pull on up and go pay for it so with the caravan and car for us 192.50 but you don't have a choice it's the only way over it's the only way back so that um mm -hmm. You get camping permits with that too. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, that's how it is. That's actually, the funny thing is, is the bottle of water was only three bucks. Bargain. Everywhere else has been expensive and I thought it would be here too, but <laughs> that's normal price. But anyway. I needed the water because I was a bit iffy about drinking boar water. Mm. <laughs> we'll, go, um, we'll go line up, jump on this ferry. Just made it over the Jardine, just the van. <laughs> the van did, did scrape, scrape a, little. a little bit, but I think um, I think that happens to a few people. Agree. Anyway, that was cool. Yes, <laughs> we had it. We did have a lot of people say that we wouldn't make it on the Jardine with um, the size of the van. The size of the van, and it did scrape a bit on the way out. So it'd be interesting getting them back on that yeah. way. But they didn't care though. They were like it. <laughs> it was just like, yep, go, go on. <laughs> So 
So we've just pulled into Bamiga. Uh, we've just went and filled up fuel and it was quite reasonably priced to be honest, considering where we are. It was $2.50 a litre. Mm, it was more expensive one of the roadhouses, was well, it? was, it was $3 a litre or $2.95. There you go. So yeah, Bamiga, a bit of a built up town. Um, you got a bottle tavern, supermarket, blah, blah, blah. Basketball courts. Yep. So That's we'll... Sorts of things. Basketball courts. <laughs> <laughs> they all locked up, but... So we'll go, um, we just obviously filled up fuel, filled up water, and we will go get some drinking water because a lot of the water up here is non-potable. So yeah. we will not drink from our tanks for a little bit. You look like you need a ride. I do, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the parking in Bamaga, there's no like Main Street parking for caravans. So there's a sign that says park around the back of this dirt road here. And yes. we thought that might have been like a way to walk through, but You should wasn't. see how far I've carried this 10 kilos of water. You should have called me earlier. <laughs> I didn't think about it. <laughs> <sighs> All right. It's work out for today. <laughs> On to Seisha. <laughs> I'd literally just turned the camera off after driving out of the main street and there's a horse in the middle of the road. That's not the only one we've seen either. There's been like plenty of horses back there just like literally on people's front verandas. Yeah, there was like a community <laughs> centre and there was two horses just out the front of it. <laughs> Have a look at this place, Seisha Jetty. The water looks absolutely incredible. Obviously you cannot swim here at all, but I just want to get the tinny off, I'll tell you what. And be careful of crocs, though. That's right, mate. Be careful of crocs, eh? So you don't have to worry about those crocs, do you? No. <laughs> They're harmless. So we've just had some lunch, and the boys, the young boys, Toby and Corbin, are desperate for a fish, so... It's just started raining, of course, um, but they're gonna have their little flick and see if they can get some of these garries, I think. Wet season, hey? Hey? Wet season. Yeah. <laughs> just gotta swim to my car now. So we're just having a little fish off that jetty. What happened, Toby? It started raining. <laughs> raining is an understatement. Holy, so much water came from the sky. And, oh, well, I don't know if you could see it, but like, look at the puddles over there. So we've just, um, we've just ripped into this very first caravan park. It's literally right next to the jetty and apparently you can get sights that back onto the water. So Erin's in the reception now, trying to sort it out. We'll see what happens. But yeah, can you get dry? I heard him. <laughs> All right, have a go at this guys. Seisha Holiday Park. So, we've ended up getting an unpowered site. Just excuse my sweat moustache, I am like <laughs> melting. It's like so humid now, eh, after that rain. Holy, it's thick. But, um, what, 30 bucks a night, was it? Yeah. Unpowered, we got the water right behind us. It's pretty beautiful, apart from the heat. Yeah, and the rain. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if we're going somewhere, we're bringing the rain with us. That's so. right. But, um... Yeah, we topped that water before. We all need a good shower because we're just red and muddy is red. after that rain. The walls of our caravan are red yeah. because the kids just have like dirty hands putting them over everything. <laughs> oh, but have a go at it. This is pretty stunning. This is like what you think of when you think of Cape York. Please. All right, it's real late in the day. We've just decided to get the boat out. We haven't had it off on the trip yet. So the boys are in with me. We're just gonna have a little troll around. It's probably too late. It's probably too shallow. Silly, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> Thank you. 
What do we got? Oh, a little Queenie. Oh, yeah. we've just come for um, a little drive out to see the DC-3 crash site. From World War II, was it? I think so. Yeah. Relic. It's only um, about five minutes out of Bamaga. Yeah, it's not a, not a long drive at all. No. Surprising. <laughs> so head towards the airport and then you'll see the sign at the next intersection. Mm. I can't believe how much of it is still here. It's pretty amazing that it's such intact still. So 1945, left the Archer Field in Brisbane and crashed here. That's another one of those things that's just off the road. But when you watch it on videos, it, it looks seems like it's like a it's massive, yeah, in the massive middle trend. of the bush. <laughs> but literally, the that's road's the road there. there. <laughs> so we're just on our way out to Punzen Bay to check it out, and we come across the croc tent. Like I didn't know it was here. Neither. I thought it was like on the way, like, like on the up. main road. Hey, yeah. It's <laughs> funny. Like you watch other people's videos, and you think you've got an idea of how everything is, yeah. and it's nothing like it. No. Nah. It's happened everywhere. <laughs> WA, like NT. Completely different, but at the same as what I thought. <laughs> anyway, let's go into the cockpit. You can't come up here and not buy a single. You always need new singlets anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a beer singlet, it's a singlet of somewhere we're going. <sighs> always wanted one of these. <laughs> That's our deepest water crossing for a while. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. Just on that water crossing, um, we were going to try and bring the van out here, weren't we, to Punsen Bay? Uh, but after doing that water crossing, I don't think we'll be getting through here <laughs> just yet. So okay. we'll probably <laughs> lucky we're day tripping out, so we'll get to see it. But I think we'll just be saying staying in um, Seisha, Seisha, however you say it.
we obviously checked these little lagoons out to make sure they were croc free first because apparently there is a big two metre croc that gets up and down here so we'll give them a quick little swim to cool down because it is damn hot and then we'll retreat before this crocodile catches on. <laughs> Okay, so we've decided we're going to go to the tip now. It's nice and sunny, low wind, sort of perfect opportunity for a photo. We'll go do that iconic sign. Um, it's a forward drive track that we're going there though, isn't it? Yes, it's like a little cut through track, like not the main track that you would take. No, so it's from Punzen Bay, which we actually booked in at, so we're coming back here. So even though we said we weren't going to be able to get the van in, we're going to try anyway. Oh, it turns <laughs> out there's heaps of vans in there, it's fine. We spoke to a few other people, so. We'll just have to snake it apparently, so anyway, stay tuned for that. We'll show you <laughs> how we go. fresh pinstripes on this hey. car after that. <laughs> Whatever you call them, they're gonna be there. So we've come to a bit of water, not quite sure how deep it is or anything. Get me back in before a crop gets me. <laughs> Rubbing on some things. It was, the, um, <laughs> it was the treads on the side. They were just getting hung up on that tree. Plus side of the range over the Y62 is where a little bit slimmer. <laughs> That's all right. It'll be my deflector. <laughs> I feel that vulnerable right now from Crocs. I'm like gonna quickly run back to the car. This is making me so nervous. Looking a little bit average up ahead. I'm gonna okay, suss it out. Oh! <laughs> Man. Someone's done it. Oh, that is. That is not good. If you push your mirror out, please, we're gonna need it. So that's just all pretty gross in there. There's some logs, they're not in a good spot and they're heavy. So we're just gonna, we're gonna back up and try to go around this little, I think it's a chicken track around it, but don't know, we'll find out. It's further than I thought. <laughs> was slightly uneventful <laughs> we uh we all just decided we weren't going to try to push it through that little sloppy bit it was just 
we're going to do damage with those logs and everything in there. So we've decided, we turned around, we're out of the track now. We're going to go back to camp and we'll do the tip another time because we're coming back up here. Anyway. Yeah, we're coming back up here. So we'll have another two days really to get there, won't we? Yeah, we'll just go back, take the kids fishing or something now. Alright guys, where have we come to today? Thursday Island. Thursday Island. Um, so we've done a bit of a mission. This is our first one without all of us. So obviously having the dogs with us on the road, we cannot come places like this with all of us. Um, there was no one really in Seisha to look after the dogs. So Erin's put a hand up and said she's gonna stay back with the van. It's unfortunate, but this is kind of the lifestyle we're gonna have to learn how to live now. But we just caught the um, ferry over here. 45 minute ride, I think it was about 160 bucks return per adult and 60, 66 I think for the kids. So it's not the cheapest, but you get to come over here to Thursday Island. And um, I think we're gonna jump on a bit of a tour bus and have one of the locals take us around, check out the place. How's that sound kids? Good, and right. mum also got bit by a horse. Yes, mum did just get bitten by a horse. So <laughs> we'll chuck a photo in here. <laughs> Kids are just behind us here having a play in the park. This is a beautiful place, eh? Like it's obviously not big, but everything's really nice and well maintained. Like they've got a lot of pride in this place. It's awesome. Hey, um, the other the other aim today is to go have a beer at Australia's most northern pub. Now we're trying to figure out which one it is. There's a couple of pubs here, but we'll get there and um, we're gonna have a beer. It's gonna be good. Look at this, eh? It's just incredible. Such a beautiful place. Righto, so this is Green Hill Fort, built in 1891. And they built this because they thought the Russians were coming, but turns out they weren't. Anyway, it's up the top of the hill here. I reckon we're gonna get a pretty good view of this whole harbour. Just gotta find where to go. <laughs> Would you look at that? That is spectacular. Wow. So many islands scattered around here. So that one there is the largest island of the uh, Torres. And apparently the airport is over there. It's called an international airport, but there's no regular flights in and out. It's just for chartered flights who might be coming uh, internationally. Look at that water though. That's insane. We found it, the most northern pub in Australia. Obviously not mainland Australia, but this is it. Uh, the Torres Hotel, Torres Hotel, I don't know how you say it. But um, yeah, um, Dirk, our 
tour guide just dropped us off here. He just took us around the island. Bit hard to show you any of that stuff through the window of the van, but yeah, like an hour tour and we saw their whole island and their whole culture here. Pretty cool, well worth it. So the most northern pub didn't even have uh, beer on tap. So we had to have a can. That's okay, it's not the worst. But we're gonna head to the Grand Hotel now, which is in the main street. It's got a bloody awesome view over the water. We'll probably have lunch here. Well, a couple of beers, good pub feed. We're gonna go to the cultural center now. Hopefully you got some air con, cause it is steamy here. We'll go have a look at that. And then it's time to get back on the barge.